Did you know that the military is the heaviest drinking profession among all jobs? According to military.com, they spend more days indulging alcoholic beverages compared to engineers, architects, entrepreneurs, politicians, and all other occupations. Is it for leisure, for celebration, or is it part of their culture? Well, we're gonna find out. In Today I Learned, we'll talk about how alcohol became part of military culture and the different cocktails with military origins. Hey all welcome to Advanced Mixology. Let's get started. The History of Military Drinking Culture Historically speaking, military communities have had a significant tradition of alcohol drinking and moderate consumption is still seen as a crucial catalyst for military bonding and cohesion. Alcohol plays a vital role in military culture, which is true across the board. It has historically been associated with masculinity and authority, and military members have been urged to keep up with their peers and superiors' alcohol intake. This is also accepted in the military as a coping strategy for stress and bad feelings, and service members frequently gather after work or in between high-stress missions to drink heavily. Alcohol is more likely to be used as an emotional crutch by military personnel stationed in combat zones and away from home for extended periods of time. Drinking in the military derives from the ethos of work hard, play hard. Military life is demanding and frequently unpredictable. For example, sailors in the Navy may not get much notice before deployment and may only stop in ports for a day or two at a time while aboard ships. Because drinking is prohibited at sea, sailors frequently aim to consume as much alcohol as possible when on land. The solitude and high pressure that comes with working a tough job at sea contribute to the need to let off steam and party whenever possible. Unfortunately, this and other military customs contribute to the high rate of hazardous binge drinking. More than four drinks in a day for women and more than five drinks in a day for men are considered binge drinking. Excessive drinking leads to a strained relationship with alcohol as well as declining mental health, physical health problems, and higher rates of sexual assault. Now, why do military personnel drink alcohol? The military drinking culture is one element that may contribute to alcohol abuse among active duty service personnel and veterans. Alcohol can be utilized to facilitate bonding while also alleviating boredom and tension. Being in a setting where liquor use, particularly excessive use, is considered normal and commonplace, can drive active duty troops to increase their consumption based on their peers' habits. In addition to the drinking culture, service members are more likely to be traumatized. The trauma suffered while serving in the military can lead to major problems such as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder and substance abuse. Combat exposure can cause psychological suffering as well as unsafe drinking. Alcohol may give a mechanism for veterans who have undergone trauma to cope with the physical, mental, and emotional agony they have encountered. Trauma, emotional upheaval, stress, and boredom can all contribute to binge drinking, which can have major consequences for the health and well-being of active duty military people. Unique Mental Health Needs In many aspects, the military lifestyle is unique and the demands of the job, along with a lack of resources for emotional management, can result in mental health issues. Many military troops are required to leave their families and reside in numerous duty posts around the world, frequently for the first time. It's time to depart again once roots have grown and friendships have been formed. When further deployment and international training are added to time away, this nomadic lifestyle can take a toll on the service person and their family. Parents frequently miss their children's birth or spend significant amounts of time away from them. These and other circumstances increase the risk of mental health problems like anxiety and depression. Some service members may be hesitant to share their declining mental health for fear of being viewed as incapable of performing their task or of living with stigma associated with mental illness. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a common among service members who have been exposed to war and violence. PTSD can be a crippling disorder that has a negative impact on one's quality of life and frequently leads to substance usage. Changing the trend According to some analysts, the growth in alcohol consumption in the military should be characterized as a catastrophe. 
Alcohol misuse is a major public health issue that has ramifications for physical health, emotional well-being, job performance, and interpersonal relationships. It will be extremely difficult to sustain service members' health and wellness until this problem is addressed. There has been some debate about the outmoded materials and services accessible to those in military who are struggling with addictions, including one study that suggested military healthcare may be ignoring modern treatment methods. Military addiction counselors were being taught using rules and materials from 1984, according to the study, which indicates that addiction treatment in the military is in a desperate need of an update. Along with better treatment, some cultural reforms must occur to discourage the military from normalizing excessive drinking and to safeguard service members from the consequences of alcohol consumption. Military Drinking Abuse Although alcohol abuse and addiction are still widespread problems in our society, alcohol consumption has been steadily declining in recent years. However, one group defies the trend by drinking for longer periods of time each year. According to a recent survey, military service members spend one-third of the day of the year drinking alcohol, compared to less than one-fourth of the rest of the adult population. While military personnel have always had a reputation for drinking, the recent increase in consumption has a number of negative consequences. Many frequent negative consequences of alcohol misuse, including a lifelong battle with addiction, can be avoided by controlling the drinking culture in the military and providing appropriate mental health resources. Alcohol seemed to be a stipulated stress reliever for military members to unwind and make them escape from reality at some point. But some can't resist the effect of it, so they abuse the consumption of it so as to themselves. Let's take a look at some of them. Signs of alcoholism in military personnel with AUD or alcohol use disorder. Drinking excessively or recovering from the effects of alcohol. Having strong alcohol cravings. Drinking and engaging in risky behavior, including driving under the influence. Alcohol is causing problems at work, school, or at home. Loss of interest in previously enjoyable hobbies or activities. To achieve the same result as when drinking less alcohol, you'll need to drink more. Despite the negative repercussions and still continuing to drink. All attempts to drink less or stop drinking in the past have all failed. Signs of alcoholism among active duty military personnel. An emotional desire to consume alcohol. Spending a lot of money to encourage people to drink. Irritability or mood swings. Liver disease. Alcohol related accidents. Increased depressive symptoms. Can't control how much booze you drink. Blackouts. Relationship with family, friends, and other service members are strained. Becoming violent while intoxicated. Drinking causes shame and regret. Now, what military branch consumes the most alcohol? The military consumes the highest alcohol consumption among all other jobs. But what military branch is exactly the highest and heaviest drinker of all? According to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, the Marine Corps has the highest percentage of alcohol drinkers at 35.4%. The Army is in second place at 27.6%. The DOD or the Department of Defense garnered 27.3%. The Navy placed fourth in the survey with 26%. The Air Force is in the fifth spot at 19.8%. And civilians have the least alcohol drinkers with 15.3%. The becoming of the drinking alcohol culture. As we all know, the military has been consuming alcohol since time immemorial. It is absolutely and holistically encapsulated in their lives. Wherever and whenever they want, alcohol can never escape their hands and their hands can never let go of the booze bottles. This signifies the tie between the military and alcohol consumption culture. This means that no one can break the link between them. It is now up to the military personnel on how they consume alcohol, whether they excessively enjoy it or in moderation. Because at the end of the day, alcoholic drinks are the most available and convenient ways of ending a tiring and hectic day. Cheers! Since we talked about how alcohol became part of military culture, why not talk about the different drinks that have military origins? 
Who knows, you might enjoy drinking one of these. Cocktails with military origins. Number one, the gin and tonic. At the height of the British Empire, this renowned drink was introduced to the British East India Company's army. Malaria, which was a common disease among commanders and troops in India at the time, was treated with quinine, which is a bitter and unpleasant taste. To make it drinkable, the officers began mixing theirs with sugar, lime, and gin. Tonic water today is much sweeter, contains less quinine, and is thus far less bitter. Number 2. The Cuba Libre, also known as Rum and Coke. The Cuba Liberation Army's battle cry during the War of Independence from Spain at the turn of the 20th century was Cuba Libre. Coca-Cola was originally brought to Cuba in the baggage of the United States troops fighting in the Spanish-American War in 1898. The cola was first shipped to Cuba in 1900. According to Charles L. Cullum, author of Rum, the epic story of the cocktail that conquered the world, the drink was initially given to a U.S. troop named Barrio, who visited his establishment in Havana. Yes, it's a rum and coke, but it's much more than that. Number 3. Gunfire This less well-known beverage was given to lower-ranking British Army soldiers in the 1890s to give them a boost of bravery before a dawn onslaught. After retrieval missions in the Korean War, British forces would hand it over to the United States military policemen. Gunfire is still consumed by some British military on special occasions such as Christmas when superiors serve it to their troops. Number 4. Sidecar According to legend, the sidecar was invented after a World War I army captain couldn't get rid of a cold. This cocktail was created by his favorite bartender in Paris and named it after the motorbike sidecar in which he was typically transported. Number 5. The French 75 Raoul Loughberry, a World War I fighter pilot of French and American ancestry, flew with the Lafayette Escadrille, a group of American aviators who wished to battle Germany even though the United States had not yet entered the conflict. Champagne was the drink of choice for French pilots, but that wasn't enough for Loughberry's American side, so he mixed his champagne with cognac, which he claimed made him feel like he'd been hit by a French 75mm howitzer. Alcohol is absolutely bonded with the military. It can never be replaced by any beverage because alcohol is already part of military culture ever since it was created. It is one of the things they hold on to with regards to personal or professional situations they are into. Hence, alcohol became part of their culture not because this signifies authority and masculinity, but rather an escape from reality. So what do you think of the alcohol-military culture relationship? Do you think that the military should never binge or abuse drinking alcohol? What about the different cocktails with military origins we have mentioned? Have you tried one? Well, let us know in the comment sections below. Please check out our description for more related content you might want to watch. If you like this video, give this a thumbs up and subscribe to Advanced Mythology. See y'all later!